Welcome back to the Roaring Peacock podcast. We talk about Leeds United, or should I say, Jorginho Ruter FC. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> my, name's, <laughs> my name's Adonis, and uh, we've got a lot to talk about. Ruter, we'll talk about Dallas, we'll talk about four clean sheets in a row. Leeds three, Watford nil. That was good, wasn't it? And probably some of the life things. I don't know. Oh, Mac has uh, renovated his house. Yeah, Barney, I don't know what you've you've renovated something, have you? No, I haven't done anything really. No, nothing no. interesting. No. Okay. Not been abused recently on Twitter, online? Okay, oh, like that, yeah, that just goes it's normal, that, isn't it? Right. Every, every, every week, the poor bastard. Yeah. He hardly says anything controversial and just gets loads of people piling on. I was caught, I was caught a week sun last night. A w- what? A, a week, week sun. sun. Yeah. A weak sun, one of those smaller stars. You're a, you're mm. a tiny star in the galaxy. Take some of that. I hope you I hope you feel insulted now. How are you going to recover from that? I don't know. Just block. Best thing to do. Right. So on Twitter, you can find Barney at Barney Lufc Twenty One Barnes. Oi oi! I just oi, speak oi. shite on the internet. Right there you go. And um, joining us as well is the Prince of Darkness himself. Prince of the North, Machiavelli, Mac, at you and Mecca. doing, chaps? Are we all right, you sexy bastards? I'm feeling good. I'm I'm feeling great. I had to I'm peel my just, just peeled myself oh, off the ceiling after that win. Oh, after that, what are you going to say? What are you going to say then? <laughs> peel my foreskin back, and I feel fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of moths flew out, and, <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so let's talk about, let's start off with uh, Ruter, if that's all right. Yeah, um, start wherever you like. Hoffenheim, £32 million. Pound. We were it's a off. big trouble in the Premier League. He sort of swaggers in in his hairy slippers. Not the saviour we were looking for at the time. Um <laughs> Uh, one assist in 11 Premier League appearances. I remember at times we were like, you know, there were stats coming out. Oh, he hasn't had a, had a shot. Yeah. <laughs> like nine games, zero shots on target, 36, up to 36 million pounds and, and all of that. So clearly didn't work out, but he's starting to look good now. Mac, you want to kick us off? Yeah, good. Love it. Um, I was probably the one who got stuck into him the most i'll hold my yeah. hands up to all these things i can't hide it because i'm usually on here slagging people off so it's um yeah I, I recorded for posterity but yeah i think listen i think the criticism was fair he has come back a different player he looks got a bit of swagger about him looks like he's put a, you know usually we say people look fitter leaner he looks like he's put a bit of weight on and beefed up a bit and, and seemed stronger for it uh, just found himself, but you know, he, I, I, he kind of forget with people like him. He's, he's still really young, isn't he? You know, he was young when we bought him, and he's just finding his feet and developing as a footballer. And, and you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I thought the whole game he was pretty disappointing. So people keep saying, "Oh, he's been brilliant," you know, all season and every game. I was a bit disappointed the whole game, and there's that there was still that argument about is he a nine, is he a ten? You know, where does he fit best? Shouldn't Piro be playing higher up? Um, so you know he's going to still have these, these inconsistencies at times, but Jesus, I mean, when he's on, he's on in it, and when he clicks, everybody clicks around him, and he seems to fire. Everybody seems to operate around him. You know, the Millwall game, a great example, um, and certainly the Watford game. I mean, he was almost unplayable I mean, that, that, and unrecognisable from the from the the rutter that we've come to know and um, in some ways love or hate, whatever. But I said changing his name's helped, you know, his channel and his, I don't know where Rutter comes from. It sounds like, you know, somewhere Belle Isle in Leeds or something, you know, the Rutter family, but he suddenly changed his name to Jorginho, channeled his inner Brazilian and it's like a different player. So long may it continue. Um, you know, he, like I say, on, on, on the weekend, he was, he was unplayable. I mean, their midfield couldn't get near him. He was too strong for everybody, too skillful. His touch was too good. And, and, and I'm not a fan of, I'll be honest with you, Farker, because I love watching, you know, look at Rafinha. If you'd said to Rafinha, just calm it down a bit, you know, don't 
don't, don't take the piss too much and don't, don't show too much swagger. <laughs> Imagine what, you, what response you would have got. I mean, you'd have skulked around and, and rascaled it for, for weeks, wouldn't it? Um, uh, let him go and enjoy himself. You know, that's the point. He looks like he's enjoying himself. He's got a smile on his face. Don't do anything to detract from that by saying, you know, let's be respectful of the opposition. It's not about being disrespectful. He's loving what he's doing. And those those extra, you know, the little drag back pass that he did, you know, from from almost from a goal kick or a clearance, oh. you know, the, the the Maradona turn on the touchline that left that kid sliding out to the hot dog stand out on, on, on his ass. On his ass for weeks, like um, like like you know when a dog sits on their ass and walks across, yeah, and drags them. himself along. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when well, they've got worms, just, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I do the same to be fair when I've got worms. Um, but yeah, is that, are you saying that Ritter gave this gave this poor Watford player worms? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, he, he corrupted him that much. He got worms in in the space of about a millisecond. But um, that's no, what great, Farker was really it. saying. Listen, yeah. George, Georgie, you've, you've had a great game, but don't give the opposition worms, lad. No, it's not good. That prep sounds horrible, that medicine you have to take for it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, great. Love it, Barney. Um, I, I mean, I was still sceptical at the start of this season and, and a lot of people were saying that he could be the answer in the ch- in the championship. I mean, the first game at home, I just thought he looked a little bit lost, but... In hindsight, mm. that's probably not going. That wasn't going to be Farker's team that was going to be playing this season. Now we've got the team that, we, after the transfer window, everything looks really balanced, and I think that's why Jorginho is looking so good in that team. He looks, he looks strong. I mean, in the Premier League, he was getting knocked off the ball. He looks lost, and I, I think when he came in as well, he came in at the wrong time of, of the transfer window. Everyone was apparently not stressed, but stressed. Of being in a relegation battle, and he, it must have been not a under mass... not under Marsh. No, surely not at all. No, and the oh, fact Marsh. that it is the most expensive player as well. You're expecting something straight away, are you, from a 35 million player? So, yeah. But I mean, he he was absolutely loving life on Saturday when he was walking around the stadium, saying thanks to everyone for chatting his name and stuff. He had a big smile on his face, and it looks like one of those players that. When he's got a smile on his on his face, he's a he's going to be a good player for the team. Yeah, it's infectious, isn't it? It's infectious. Mm. I just love the way he was celebrating every single goal as well. Just like yeah, you he's know, the one first of those one there to jump on somebody. And, and uh, do you know what Piro's helped massively? I think he mm. him coming into that team, the way he links up, and I think just his general sort of the way he carries himself. I think that's helped Jorginho massively. Yeah, you'll see these Sorry. videos of sheep that have been like caged up or. Locked up in a barn for years, and then they, you know, mm. some animal group releases them, and they're leaping round like. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what he was doing when he was celebrating goals. Going to say hello to a few people. Nora says, "Whoop whoop." Um, uh, eight, eight ball alley. Great to see you guys back again. Great to see you too, Ali. Uh, Derek Del Boy Moore. Evening chaps. Evening Derek. Uh, Michael Brown says, "Good evening, guys." Michael Brown says. <laughs> Does the Roaring Peacock have a regular <laughs> set time when you come on? <laughs> As it's been a while since I last saw your channel on YouTube. No, Michael, I'm sorry. We've, we, we, no. There's lo- lots in the back catalogue to watch, Michael. Just go back and watch some of those classics. But yeah, we're yeah. Just the most erratic podcast. Yeah, we're the most erratic League United podcast. That's our claim to fame. Not, you won't sing that, Square Ball. Right, um, yeah, yeah. The most go irregular... watch the, the Fulham match review. <laughs> Yeah. From three years ago, or whatever it was, go watch that. Um, yeah, I feel I, I, I tell you what, who I feel sorry for the two viewers who left mm-hmm. right after you said um, something about my foreskin, and they've totally missed <laughs> Rutter giving oh. uh, Watford players worms. They probably thought that was going to be the standard for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> they were right. <laughs> Probably will be. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's gonna, it's gonna go lower. It's gonna go lower. <laughs> it's right. definitely gonna get worse. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were hiding in his hairy slippers. That's where he got them. <laughs> um. Yeah. So rounding off the Rutter talk or Rutter, uh, just, a, just a, just a comprehensive display. I thought he came alive against Ipswich. That goal where he took on five players. I thought that was the turning the turning point really for me. His time at Leeds, you know, he was a, he's a young guy in England for the first time. You know, moving countries, twenty one years old. Took him a, a while to settle by his own by his own words, but 
he's he's settled now. I don't know. Maybe you know. Every now and then, Orta was right, wasn't he? <laughs> every yeah. now and then, <laughs> it's just that's not what we needed. We didn't need that in January. We needed you know a Lee Chapman type to just come in and and bang in fifteen goals in the last half of the season and keep us up. Mm. But now we've got him. I'm glad that I'm glad that uh, we've got him. And just to say, I think he's uh, yeah yeah. So most chances created for Leeds this season. Jorginho Rutte, 15. And uh, can you guess who's second? Second chances most created. chances created this season? Dan James. Boom! Got it in I'll one, back. 13, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I must uh, admit, for the goal, for Perot's goal, mm. I just, every, when Dan James was on the ball, it's like, make the right decision, make the right decision. And he did. And nine times out of ten this season, he's done pretty well with his decision-making. Do, do, you, know, do, do you know what, player. though? I, I look at this now. You, you look at, you know, I'm not making excuses for Dan James because, again, I've criticised him myself enough, you know, quite and and not particularly his effort and his work rate and his you know, physicality and his in, and all the things that you want to see, but that end product. If you watch Piro, virtually every time Dan James gets the ball, Piro's pointing where he wants it. He's actually got somebody to hit now. And I'm not saying there hasn't been other players that haven't been in good positions and James could have made, made different decisions. But I think Dan James's strength has been proven in certainly the last couple of games or the, the Millwall and the, um, the Watford game is. His strength is getting to a position and sort of, you know, he's fairly deep. He actually has proven he can get, he can hit, hit a target man. He can put the ball in in certain areas. You know, the one for Ruter on um, the early one for Ruter in the six yard box. You know, Ruter probably should have scored that. So you could argue he could have had three, you know, three assists on 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 the weekend. But well, he did I, it I in he's, in he's Australia. Hit, he? he did it in Australia yeah. in the pre season la- last season before last mm. season oh. in the pre season Australia tour. That was difficult for me in, to in say, apparently. In the pre 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 season, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, and and he did a couple of assists then. I think get you know against some tiny little team, but he looked good. He looked decent. He looked on it, and then we just sent him off to, on loan to Fulham. Mm. So he's definitely got it in him. But I think the system is helping. Yeah, the system helps. Yeah. I think having a player like Piro again, who was just telling him where to put, it, asking for it, making those runs. He, he's sort of a player who. who He's a bit more instinctive, James. I think the more time you give him on the ball, the, the less he's capable of making the right decision. Whereas Piro's asking for it really early and he's getting it on a plate for him, isn't he? So, yeah, brilliant. You know, and good, you know, the, the, we forget that they're humans and that they're going to make mistakes. You know, Ruta particularly, you know, he's took him a while to settle in. He's a lad, you know, was he French from been playing in Germany for years, 21 years of it. I mean, imagine moving to um, you know, Leeds and England and it's it's a big, well, it's a lot to take on in it. So, yeah, you do forget that sometimes and I'm guilty of it as well. I won't, won't hide the fact that I've been the one to get stuck into them more than, more than most, but um, it's great I, to see them. I think the square ball described it as his, what was it, his something arch, his um, um, oh, revival Char- arch or something. Or, character or you know, redemption arch. <laughs> Redemption arc, yeah, that's the one. I, so, I, d- yeah. I didn't listen to it, but yeah, yeah. There's only one Leeds podcast for me. Uh, well, of course, yeah. Dav said, question, which is rarer, a Leeds United clean sheet or a Peacocks podcast? Well, <laughs> we've had four clean sheets in a row, so I think that tells you everything, doesn't it? <laughs> Liam B, hi, the Peacocks. Good to see you back. Leeds, 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 Leeds. Uh, brilliant Saturday for Ruter. Everybody's happy for to see us back. Good to have them back. Somebody else has put it. Uh, Demet, here we go. Dremet, thought you guys had given no, up. No. <laughs> We've been busy. We're busy. We're busy people. You know, when if you lot can start, you know, we'll start a Patreon. If you lot can start chipping in, we can all give up our jobs and then we'll be on every week. But, you know, at the moment. <laughs> yeah, see, it's going to take effort to start that Patreon. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. It's an effort and administration that none of us have got the fucking heart for. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a performer, Mac. I can't, I can't be doing with this admin at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Farka the fish-eyed genius. <laughs> Right, something I did want to talk about was Stuart Dallas because um, the official Leeds United podcast has just come out. Uh, that's obviously the only other one that I listen to because, mm. you know, uh, 
Anyway, uh, they had Rob Price interview on and he was talking about Stuart Dallas. Just wanted to impart some of the knowledge that I just learned. So uh, <clears throat> they were very surprised when Dallas went down and stayed down when he got injured because he'd never done that before. And he'd actually fractured a part of his foot and he was back and nobody knew about it. I don't even think he knew about it. Just, oh, my foot's a bit sore. And he was back in training two days later. So that's the kind of person that he is. What happened was they thought he'd maybe broken his knee. And you know the femur, that that mm -hmm. that long bone, the top of the leg. You know how it's got like... <laughs> it's got two, that long bone. It's got the two balls. Bone biggest biggest <laughs> bone in the body, isn't it? <laughs> what is it? The leg bone's connected to the knee bone... What was that? Uh, anyway, anyway, anyway yeah. it's got two big balls at the end of it. Mm. Well, he smashed to pieces, completely smashed one of those balls. So that's what he did. How is it? What, the hip side or the knee? It must be the knee side. Then, knee, 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 yeah. knee, yeah, because it was so clash of knees. He, how is he playing again, ever? Yeah, oh, that's the yeah. thing, yeah, yeah. But it was Grealish. But you know the size of Grealish's his fucking tree yeah. drops. Big calves, aren't they? And he's yeah, loaded yeah. down with a lot of gel as well. On his hair. He doesn't miss leg day, does he? No. No, he doesn't. He's got calves like thighs, hasn't he? Yeah. He's, yeah, yeah. Um, so, seven and a half hour surgery. Right. Uh, they knew it was going to be a minimum of a year out. Uh, and uh, then in December, he got uh, infection in the knee. So, that, that, that's delayed him another three months. So, that's why. Uh, so, they thought he, was, he might make it back at the end of the season, but. That's why he didn't, because uh, yeah, he got that infection. So that's what happened to Dallas. But it's good to see him back training. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like one of those injuries you get, isn't it? And if you get back into a game again, do you? I can't imagine Dallas is that type of player, but you'd be scared to go into a tackle again, wouldn't you? Because if if it could happen again, I don't know. But Dallas doesn't seem that type of player, though. I think well, I just, yeah. I just think for Dallas as well. I, I know the old cliche, but I think he's one of those players that's good for the dressing room. He's got old old head on him. He understands what it means to play for Leeds and what 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 we expect from a Leeds United player as well. And also, when he when he plays for us, he's usually a seven out of ten player for us. Mm. I mean, I, I'm not expecting him to be. I mean, I'd, I'd be still really surprised if he does play a game this season because I still think it's far too early for him to come and play in the championship far too early. I mean, even making the bench, if I'm honest. If, if he does, it'll be towards the end of the season for five, ten minutes because that injury sounds not really, really nasty. And it seems like one of those things that you could feel all right and then you're back into training, more stre you're more strain on that injury and then bang, it's you're back to square one again. I think he could be back. I think he 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 might mm. make the bench. Yeah, yeah, definitely before the end of the season. Well, if he's training again now, they're going to take it slow. But I mean, there's months and months to go. Yeah, I've told this story before. I went up for a header, and smashed my head into uh, the goalkeeper's mouth, knocked three of his teeth out, and I had a big cut on my head, blood running down everywhere. Told me to. I wanted to play on. They told me to go to hospital. <laughs> <laughs> and um ever, ever since then I, I, I afterwards i did i did find it difficult to go in for headers when i knew that other people were around me i think there's just something inside of you that says it's not it's just not worth it don't no. put your head into a dangerous place but no. i mean mac have you ever had you play football for a while you ever have mm. a serious injury and I mean, I, I was one of them, probably a bit like Dallas, where I never got injured at all, ever. And then when I did it, I did it properly. So I did cruciate ligament. Um, I did medial collaterals in my other knee, but in my right knee, I did, the, did it cruciate ligament. So I did it properly. But same, I mean, they wanted to operate and I refused because I had heard, well, I'd had lads, lads that I played with, you know, I played at a decent level and, and were saying, oh, don't, don't get the operation because you can come out, out of it worse with less movement in your knee. And So I just did the physio and did the work. I was out for probably nine months, um, probably a little bit more, maybe about nine, ten months maybe, and came back having done a lot of physio, a lot of work on your quads and a lot of the stuff that told you to do to, you know, to make up for the, the weakness in your knee without having the operation. And, um, you know, thankfully, I didn't, Never had any real issues with it again. I mean, there was odd times where I tweaked it and you could, you know, it was weak and I didn't have 
I was never quick, but you know that sort of explosive, sort of off your right knee. You know when you sort of start a sprint or whatever was never the same. I don't think it was ever the same footballer again. But um, I think that that I was the opposite. I, I think where I thought, fuck it, it, it in for a penny. You know, it, I know that attitude will surprise you, but um, <laughs> coming from me, but you know where I was the opposite. Where I was like, well, if it's going to go, it's going to fucking go. So I might as well get stuck in and um, test it out, I guess. And I think I've got a feeling Dallas might be quite similar, where I think he won't shirk that first tackle and it'll either be all right. And I think, right, sound, it gets you that over that hurdle of your confidence coming out. You think, right, it's all right. I've just got into a right challenge there and it's vibrated and I feel okay and it's still in one piece and I can get on with the rest of my career now rather than carrying it and being guarded about it for the rest. And I think at that level as well that he's playing at as opposed to you know what we played at, yeah, I just don't think you can get away with playing half cock or not going into things. You've got to do it hundred percent, aren't you? Otherwise, you get found out anyway. And in a way, you know, people used to say to me, "You're more likely to get injured by holding back and not going in fully than you are if you just play like you did." And and that's kind of what I did. But um, yeah, I, I'd probably think Dallas would be similar. Well, they've got three got- fitness coaches working with him every single day, and Rob Price was talking a lot about psychology as well and the psychology of you know, not, not, uh, mm. not being scared to go back into, um, challenges as well. So a few He's of your comments, it. Liam B it's unbelievable. He can still play it and never heard of an injury like that. Yeah. It's most common in car crashes, Liam. <clears throat> <clears throat> so wow. very, very rare on a football field, but people will, people will break their femur in a car, <clears throat> cr- in a car crash because of the whiplash. Uh, Dav said play football for 30 years. Saw this injury once. Sadly, he never played again. Hope Dallas can beat this. Right, let's talk about Watford. Leeds 3, Watford 0. Uh, Joel Pirro's fourth goal in five appearances. Third consecutive win over Watford for the first time in Leeds United's history. Four consecutive league clean sheets for the first time since March 2020. And that's after conceding 150 seven goals in the last two seasons and they, they were uh what was it 38 38 game seasons as well it's not even uh not even like the championship Jaden anthony's first ever goal for leeds two assists for daniel james sam byram first goal for leeds since december 2015 first home league win in 10 matches going back to april First home win since April. Jesus Christ. And uh, Leeds, Leeds moving up to fifth. And some um, of the stats the then. Stats. Uh, Pirro uh, opened the score in 67 minutes. Mm-hmm. The back post, a little tap in from a, you know, the assist of the assister set up by uh, brilliant Ruter. Uh, he went through two players. It was fantastic. And then... Oh, uh, the balance is ridiculous, isn't it, Ruter's? Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, James Corner, Byram header, and uh, a delightful piece of skill from uh, Ruter and then through ball to Anthony, scoring his first goal and home debut. XG leads 2.33, Watford 0.14. Leads has 17 shots to Watford's four, 10 shots on target to Watford's one. It was a completely dominant display. Mm. Barnes, you were there? Were yeah. you there as well, Mac? Or? No, I went on Saturday. No, no. Mm. Let Barney give you the uh, view from the cop. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just really enjoyable <laughs> watching good football and knowing that we're not going to get battered. And yeah, possibly it's because we're back in the championship as well. More chance of winning games. But it's just, it's actually enjoyable watching players actually knowing what they're doing. And knowing that we do look quite safe at the back as well. And I know some teams have will sit back and that's probably why they haven't scored. But we when we do have the ball at the back, I don't think, oh fucking hell, we're gonna what we're we gonna do with this ball here. I feel quite safe. And he, he, you can see the confidence in Melier now as well with the, the, the front foot the front four in front of him. I mean, that, that our attacking attacking wise, it's absolutely ridiculous the pace we've got and the, the it seems like sometimes we do hit on the counter attack. And that's where Ruter and Perot play really well. They're coming to midfield to collect the ball, and then all of a sudden, bang, you've got that pace going forward with either Somerville 
or Dan James on the wings as well. I thought I thought the way we played against Watford though, first half I thought, is this going to be like another Sheffield like Wednesday? Another it's going to be, it's nil nil. But after that, I just thought we we just absolutely dominated that game, and the goals we scored were really good goals. And I haven't screamed that hard for a while when Byron scored. I was like, fucking get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone started chanting yeah. his name as well. I thought, yeah, that, it's good to see him back. And actually, he could be one of the best signings this summer for us because I, I think when he when he's played, he's just a solid ten out of ten all the time. He's really good at reading the game and he's good at going forward. And it's what it's an ideal sort of transfer for the championship. Well, we were absolutely pissing ourselves when we when we saw that he was he was training. Yeah. Just for, and they were saying it was just for fitness, sort of like charity or something. But if you look at how he played at Leeds, and then if you look at what happened to him after he left, barely played at all. Mm. He, he he barely got a chance or injury because of injuries or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. But it, it's crazy because he, he won all those awards, Young Player of the Year and, and all of that. Now he's got this uh he's got this kind of second chance and he just looks like he's home and it, it's a weird it's weird that isn't it it's just that some people mm. some players tend to play well for certain teams and not for others and it's, yeah it's just bizarre but it's so, it was so good to see him what i like about the way farker has got us playing is we sit back we we sit back in a kind of mid block and we invite the pressure and we sucker them in what you're saying Barnes is exactly right because we're hitting people on transition on the counter or it seems like they're on the counter but it uh, is only that by design because we've got those two defensive midfielders and so we're um, we're not being told to high press like fucking idiots (laughs) (laughs) under under Marsh's tactics so we're not we're not pressing that much we'll press from time to time but not that much will generally tend to sit back, sucker them in, they come forward, commit players forward, and then we can hit them with our, with our pace on the break. Mm. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's hard because there is nothing but positives, really. And, and you know, I've said it before, even during you know, the Wednesday game and the whole game, <clears throat> it's still really positive that it was just a matter of time, you know, that Farker's system... You know, getting certain individuals back and and playing at one hundred percent fitness would would make a big difference and would drive us on to be, you know, top sort of five, three, well, three or four, five, six side. So it's nothing but positives, but it's the um, Rajad Kipling's if mentality in it of trying to treat, you know, both triumph and disaster um, as as the, the the imposters that they are, and that's where I'm trying to be at with it because. <clears throat> as much as I'm really positive about, it, I just think it's going to be a really long season. People's form's going to dip. We are prone to getting injuries, but you can't be anything but positive. I mean, who would have thought having a manager who knew what he was doing would make a difference to a team? I mean, <laughs> wow, it's amazing, isn't it? And not resorting to bringing in desperation signings like um, Garcia and um, Allardyce, you know, that, that was never going to work. It was a bit of a punt. I thought it was interesting during our malaise that obviously Angus did that interview and almost admitted that, you know, both of those recruitments were, were kind of done in desperation and and you can sort of understand why but it all stems from bringing in the wrong person in the first place to replace Bielsa and the more you listen to Fark's mentality and his you know his kind of ethos and in a way talks um about the club and the fans being you know the, the only important factor you know the players that he you know he's brought back Byron who you know again we did laugh thinking you know Byron Jesus what we're we back 10 years ago and you know, he's proven that he knows a player and he trusts Byron. And I think he, the reason he brought him into train was, uh, you know, by all accounts, was to test his fitness because that was the only thing he was concerned about because he'd had two years of his, his career being ravaged by injury. But ability-wise, he, he's never doubted him, even though, he, to me, he's played out of position because he's a right-back, isn't he? But he can play either side. So he's, he's got that utility. He's a leader. You know, you look across the team now, there's leaders all over the pitch. Ampadu's a leader. Rodon's a leader. Byram's a leader, Aileen's a leader, you know, you've got people all over the pitch, which we've always said, you can't have this emphasis on the captain, you know, whoever that might be, is, is your, your vocal person, Cooper or whoever it happens to be, <laughs> you've got to have leaders all over the pitch and you're starting to see that now, I mean, you know, we haven't talked about Kamara, <laughs> Slot, slotted in like he'd been there for two years and, and never had to give the ball away, 
made brilliant decisions. I, th- I thought about Kamara, which I really liked. He controlled the tempo a lot. He, when he got the ball, he, either, he knew when to play quick and, and do things quickly. He knew when to hang on, draw people in, play the sensible ball. So I just think, you know, recruitment, ultimately what's happened is from top, and I'm talking very top, down to bottom, we've become a proper club again and it's showing on the pitch. And we've always said it that when Leeds have had hard times, it's because we've been run badly by clowns. Mm-hmm. When we've had good people running the club or a, a Bielsa that's kind of almost carried the club on his shoulders on his own, it, the, the, the results on the pitch and the, and the football that you get to see is reflected by that. And, you know, the way we've recruited players, the way we're sorting out the scouting situation rather than Victor Orta doing it, you know, having too much power. You know, just everything you hear, you know, having uh, even silly things like Moretti and um, Cruz Campo beers in the cop. I mean, it's as expensive as they were rather than the shit that you get served up every week. You know, I just, you can sense that there's that, t- um, t- you know, sort of sea change, that tide shift in, in, in the way the club's being run and it's just showing the pitch. You know, you look, you look at Rodon, I absolutely love Rodon, you know, mm. but Cooper came in and did a fantastic job, you know. I know Rodon, Rodon is the player I thought Urente was going to be. Yeah. Do you know what, though? Again, the recruitment, you know, looking in, I've said, we've said it before, I've certainly said it on here, English player, well, English, Welsh player, British player, with experience in the division, you know, Jaden Anthony's done that, you know, Kamara's got in it. It makes a massive difference. We've just talked about Ruta coming from a different country, as good as you might be or your reputation might be. He's always going to take a while to settle in. And we know that, in particularly in the Premier League, you don't get that time. You have to almost hit the ground running. And I think the players that we're bringing in are, and, and it's just nice. You know, I was saying to somebody on, on Twitter today, um, or X, whatever it's called now, it's, it, we don't need to argue about whether James should start or Jaden Anthony should start or, you know, when Nonto's back, what about who comes, you know, should should um, Rodon come back in for Cooper, despite Cooper having a really good game? It doesn't matter. You know, Fark has now got the ability and the, and, and the, 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 the personnel to be able to rotate and... Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily be worried whatever starting eleven he put out now and you look at the bench now compared to what we've had under Marsh and you know since Marsh has gone you're actually thinking well he can come on and make a difference he can come on and make a difference he can come on. you know and that's just a lovely situation to be in and, and Barney said it I mean I said to somebody the other day would you rather be in the championship doing what we're doing now and getting 3-0 wins and looking good and you know people have talked about our attack being exceptional we've talked about that since the start of the season I've been more surprised by how, you know, we've talked about not conceding. We're not really conceding chances. I mean, Hull have gone out and battered Stoke. They beat Leicester. And people said, oh, we should beat Hull. We should have gone to Hull and turned them over. I think if we'd have had 11 men, just like we did at Watford, we probably would. And I think this, the key to Leeds this season now is scoring first. It's a bit like when Bielsa was here. If we score first, we'll win majority of the games. I don't think we'll lose many that we score first in. Um, so it's just a really exciting you know, would I rather be here doing this and talking about this than that season? You know, partly why we nearly, nearly gave up podcasting was because it just got depressing and it was the same old, same old every week and it just got repetitive and it was depressing talking about Leeds United. We're excited again, aren't we, about the, the whole situation and, and particularly what's happening um, on the pitch. So, yeah, long may it continue and, um, you know, God bless the 49ers who again we've given shit to uh, and so you know questioned at times their competence and you know Farka I think everybody has, has got behind him you know everybody likes his personality and believes in him it doesn't do him any harm when he's bringing you know 30, 30 yard up in the air football's down with one touch because it just you know it sets him apart from the competition so he's just you know just the way he comes across the way he talks he's very Bielsa like and, and humble and, and gratifying to listen to so it's just great, isn't it? I can't shut up about it. Look, stop me talking because I love. I, I just love Leeds United again. And after the game, he did all the thing with the, the each stand as well. And we probably would have said mm. years ago, "Oh, why is he doing that? That's Tim Pot." But for me, he's backing yeah. it up in every game. We can see, we can see what's happening. We can see what how the team are trying to play, and it's. And he, I think he said well, in Marsh, a, Marsh was doing that when we were uh, when we lo- after we lost. lost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, five nil down, great. Fucking let's get back into it. Oh, what a dick. Okay, now he's just an absolute. Did you see him on that? Um, Champions Isn't he a League pundit? Program? He's a pundit now, right? Yeah, yeah on the Champions League program. He I mean, can't. He can't, the... he can't get a job as a manager anymore. <laughs> just, uh, do you know what? You might as well come to Leeds, where whatever your club you're at. 
because you just fall upwards from Leeds United. It's, you could be the shittiest manager, the worst centre forward. You know, look at some of the players who've got on to play for Union Berlin and you know play teams in Germany in the Champions League and stuff like that. And the shit and then the falling upwards. You know, Christiansen, Lorente. But then him, he was on that program and he sort of. Oh, he's so fucking sickly, man. He came onto that girl and other presenter, didn't he? Did oh, you see yeah. it? Oh, really? Oh, he's fucking yeah. cheesy, man. He's it's so horrible, man. Now. Oh, he's horrible. Not another fucking one. Yeah, Get that yeah, meme definitely. out. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Another <laughs> one? <laughs> Not another one. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise you, would it? <laughs> no. I'm not making any accusations. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> you are, just, this is all just you joke. <laughs> 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 I just hate Marsh. <laughs> 63 people watching, by the way. So thank you very much for that. Um, yeah, give us a one. thumbs up. Sorry we uh, we cue all the memes about us not doing uh, regular podcasts, but yeah, we've um, just got other things to do. Barnes, you you look like you've got something. You you were in the middle of a, a saying something about uh, Farker. Yeah, I think Fist pumping. I think one of the things is that you know if it's going to go well when when the the the, the club looks organized and the mm. team looks organized and that's when the fans will get on board or everything and once that happens we're like a bit of a monster we, we just keep on rolling and going and we've seen with Farker as well that on, when he was at Norwich he goes on these runs and that's that's massive in the championship to go on these uh, these runs of six and seven games unbeaten mm. and we've sort of seen that now where we just look very very I mean, the the football is attacking, but sometimes it's just very steady as well. Just like sometimes, no, we don't need to pass it. We don't need to go out quickly. Let's just observe where we are and just start again. And yeah. just it, and also actually being able to play the ball out from the back rather than I was thinking, oh shit, we need to get rid of it really quickly. We actually look really organised and players uh, he, look comfortable on the ball. You're saying that passing is quite important in yeah. football, is I what you're saying. Someone's, yeah, just, yeah, someone's just mentioned we had, we had 85% pass completion. Right, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, that, I, I don't think we, we were we even hitting 60 last season because we were that shit. It's Bremner's ghost. Hey. 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 Good to see you. And good to see you, uh, 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 Derek and um, Bandy as well. Yes. Bandy's around as well. We've all heard of false strikers, but last season we used false managers. <laughs> um, and uh, Bremner's Ghost, again, if I had my tin foil hat on, I could swear that the 49ers brought in Jesse just to get us relegated so they could buy the club for half price. I think Bremner's Ghost has got some inside information. And we we probably shouldn't... Uh, nah, actually, nobody's listening. Or, well, actually, 54 people are. Uh, but... Um, we probably shouldn't tell Rads because he'll he'll sue, we'll sue the 49ers yeah. and then we'll have less money because that, that, he didn't know what he was doing, did he, Marsh? I mean, you compare what was happening then to what's happening now, how we just sit back, we stay in our formation, we're not running around burning up all of our stamina, all of our stamina bars, <laughs> trying to win the ball back, chasing shadows. And then mm. being completely knackered by the fifty-fourth minute, and only having five, only being able to change half the team. Mm. <laughs> so the other team are completely, the other half of the team are completely knackered. And then we concede four, five, six goals. We're just sitting back in our formation. If we win the ball back, we d we're not trying to score within eight seconds, like Marsh talks about in all of his lectures. Um, players go back into the positions that they're, that they're meant to be in when we've got possession. As you were saying, Barnes, pass it round a bit. And, and, but when there, is the, when there are those opportunities to exploit, we've got the players to do it. And, and, and Rutter uh, and, and um, Kamara, Gray before him, they've, they've all got vision. Those. They can all play. They can all pick a pass. They can, they can all make those runs. These guys, these front the front three players whoever it is whether it's Nonto and Somerville or Anthony they all know their jobs and they're all making those runs and the guys behind them have all been trained to spot those runs and it's just fucking lovely we're just it's, more, I, I it's just more instinctive in it it's just more yeah. instinctive the, I think the thing that I really like is one of the things that I sort of found really difficult under Marsh and under Gracia to a point was 
Nobody knew where anybody was going to be on the pitch. So you couldn't play a pass around the corner. You couldn't be instinctive like Rutez being now, knowing that he can do that flick, knowing that, you know, Somerville's coming up on his ins. There's that cohesion between the team. And that's definitely, that's a manager thing. Um, somebody just put about Melier, and, and it's not just Melier. It, if, who was who was Farker's man of the match on Saturday? Creswell. You know, yeah, exactly. So that's man management. That's saying to a young lad who's obviously come back from a successful, reasonably successful loan period, mm. probably expected to start more you games. Come back with your, you come back from Millwall with your life and you're <laughs> yeah. reasonably successful, isn't it? With yeah. your morals. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and you know, he's, 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 he's basically saying, I respect the fact that he's celebrating with the team and he's, he's encouraging people. He's part of this group rather than, you know, Kim Marsh's motivational speeches, which probably left half of them feeling left out and numb and, and not motivated or inspired at all. So I think that that's the difference is you can see how he's built Ruter up. You can see how he's trying to keep him under control a bit and say, you know, don't do stupid flicks in places where it might cost us, you know, make sure it's in the right area of the field. It's going to hurt people. You know, Melies, I mean, again, Player I've got stuck into loads, looked unfocused, looked not bothered, you know, looked, um, you know, you, you can't compensate for the fact that, you know, and again, this is the amateurness of, of a Rads. You know, I think, again, we've been lulled into a false sense of security because we've been so used to having poor owners, you know, Bates, GFH, you know, whoever it is that's been coming in and, and looking after the club. You kind of get somebody who's half decent, which I think Rads was probably a, a, an all right human being, but. He completely, you know, he's had, we've said it before, Barney said it, you know, he had the, was it the groundsman doing some of the IT stuff? He had, you know, you, you look at some of the stuff that's come out about, you know, Melian not having a, a, a proper goalkeeping coach. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, it's just, they're just like givens in a football club and it looks like we've tried to do everything on a, on a shoestring. You know, this kind of um, disorganised lack of professionalism has been shown as we've just discussed, it's been showing on the pitch because it's starting right at the top and that's completely been put to bed. You know, melia has got a proper coach now, in fact, two. Um, and he looks like a different player. His distribution on Sunday, and I'm not just talking long, you know, passes that we know he has been good at and ultimately over the last couple of seasons has been awful at. That short sort of the way he's holding on to the ball and letting people come towards him with confidence. You know, it may go wrong at certain points and he, he nearly went wrong at Millwall a couple of times where he had heavy touches on the ball, but he's, he's like shifting the ball around amongst the back four really well and getting them in midfield involved. Just looks like a different footballer and that, you know, for all that, the grief I've given him is down to the fact that he's confident, he's been supported well, you know, in, in being coached properly and obviously been made to feel important within the club because it had been very easy to bring Darlow in and, you know, play him every week. But, um, you know, Melly has completely turned a corner. So uh, I was just looking for uh, uh, the answer to this. So Skip says, have we got an option to buy for Rodon and Anthony if we get promoted? And uh, Liam B replied, no option to buy any of them. And I, I do believe that's true. Um, there was uh, there was an option for um, Joe Roden to to be bought by um, who was it? Who was he on loan to? Yeah. Uh, Rens, the, the uh. team, we, the, the fish and chip team. We got <laughs> <laughs> Rafinha from. So they uh, they declined uh, to activate that buy clause, and it was in the region of twenty million euros. Um, so. Yeah, there's a. I think there's a potential. I, I, you know, it might cost twenty million pounds to us if we if we get promoted. But I mean, I'd do it. I'd do something like that. In terms You're of in Anthony, I don't think that will happen because I think Sinistera will come back. Although we want it, we won't want him. So, mm. and I don't think they'll sell him on the cheap for us, Jen. Don't they? The, well, on the road and thing, I think he he's starting to feel like a bit of a Ben White sort of signing where he just looks very, very comfortable on the ball. Mm. There was one bit uh, against Tull and he had the pace to get the ball back off one of the, the centre forwards and he mm. just feels very, very composed on the ball. And I think that's one of the reasons why Stroik has come out so well this season as well because he's got a decent, um, someone decent by, by the side of him because Stroik feel, looks a bit more confident on the ball coming out and he's position-wise as well. Strooch. Strooch, yeah. Streak. Yeah. Streak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mizilla, Mizilla, yeah. Mizilla, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Met, Metzilla. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Messilla. 
<laughs> I was I was gonna Photoshop Scylla Black's hair or Scylla White's yeah. hair onto uh was she Scylla Black and then changed Scylla her name Black. to Scylla White? She no. yeah, she was Scylla White, wasn't she? She was Scylla, Scylla she? White and then yeah. she changed her name to Scylla Black. That's right, oh, yeah. Never, never known her any different than yeah, Scylla Anyway, Black. I was gonna Photoshop her hair onto it and then I was gonna <laughs> Photoshop but I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> the things you miss out on, eh? <laughs> Rick Pay, uh, it's all good news. Stuart Dallas deserves to hear us cheer him again soon. Bamford. <laughs> Bamford will be available, everyone. <laughs> and the thing is, though, is that there's less pressure on him to perform now, isn't there? There's less yeah, pressure definitely. on him to say, we need like 15 goals from you this season. Well, if he comes true. back sure. fit, is another option mm. off the bench and also a bit of squad rotation if he can start some games and Perot can come on some games if needed. So it's less pressure on him to perform because he's our only number nine. And we've got all the thing is, is for me as well, and it's been a massive thing for the last few seasons is that we, we've always relied on one person to score goals. And I think we need more players in that team to chip in, like your defenders to score. Like I don't know, four or five goals a season, and your midfielders to chip in and score your eight, your eight goals or something, rather than just relying on one big man that's going to score for you all the time. I mean, Perot is going to probably score twenty, twenty-five, but you want other players to chip in as well. Yeah, but part of me thinks you know we haven't seen Bamford in a system like this, and there's another part of me, probably the bigger part of me, that has seen Bamford miss open goals from three yards just one too many times and now that we've got Piru who will ne almost certainly never miss a ne never miss a tap in in fact that's his bread and butter that's that's what he does yeah. that part of me doesn't really want Bamford back but uh, no offense to Patrick Bamford he was brilliant for a season I think the thing Barney said it, and I think we've just described the fact that he's improved. He's a bit like not not. I wouldn't keep comparing him to Bielsa, but Farkas got improved players who were far further down. You know, the, the pecking order. You look at Melier, you look at you know James, you look at Rute. You know, he can definitely have the same impact on Bamford. And I think Barney's right. The fact that he's not this, you know, the prodigal son up front who's got to re make a return every game, that pressure on his shoulders will will have probably a, a, a positive impact on Bamford. Um, you know, whether he can force his way back in the team, I think it's <clears> unlikely unless there's injuries. But as I've said already, it's a long season and, and you know, people get injured. So, you know, you know we haven't talked about the Jed, you know, Jed Spence due back. You know, there's other players that are still due to come back for poor. Um, you know, if they come back and have the same margin of, of kind of improvement as, as some of the players we just talked about, then got a really exciting team and, and hopefully we'll have a, another exciting season in the Championship. Do you know what? I, I love the Championship now. The, the whole game the other night, it was like, you know, the fireworks, I mean, that was a bit cheesy and what have you, but I thought, this is fucking great, this. You know, Yorkshire derbies everywhere. Um, as much as we don't do very well in Yorkshire derbies, you know, and I, I, again, it, it just... I have nothing against the championship at all. I think, you know, people have talked about it with Burnley and you look at the bottom three in the Premier League now. You know, the journey's almost better than arriving at the destination, isn't it? You know, the, the getting there is much better. And I just think, you know, at what point are we going to be able to compete in the, the Premier League where it's going to be enjoyable? Where do you need to finish for it to be enjoyable in the Premier League? You know, ninth. Well, yeah. That was, was pretty, pretty fucking enjoyable. good. <laughs> Yeah, but I think our expectation bar was low because we, it was the first season. But you know, if you're in there three or four years, where do you need to finish? Six Europe. How long on, is that going to be? You know? Honestly, I th I I think somebody else said it in the chat as well. Like this this side under Farker, uh, they stay up, you know. And I, if you look at the times Farker's gone up with Norwich, they didn't spend anything on him. Nah, they didn't spend yeah, anything that's... for him. They didn't back him. Hmm. And Forty Nine is a good. Uh, they're going to back. They're going to back him for sure. Yeah. They they will. And he feels so, like one of those coaches that he would. He he seems to have a, a plan B and a plan C in games where he's quite tact. He's got a tactical mouse about him where we could probably see us probably sitting back against a a top six team, but still thinking we could probably nick a goal here or there. I mean, the thing for me is that every season a promoted team getting into the Premier League, it's just a the 
guilt gulf in that league is absolutely ridiculous every single season because Man, the Man City and other teams are just buying the best players in Europe and no one can compete with that. Mm. And I think looking at how Brighton have done it is fantastic. And that's the sort of, by the looks of it, that's the sort of route we're going down with recruitment, with a, lot of, a lot of data analysis as well. And that, yeah, that yeah, seems yeah. to be the way that how we can compete in that in the Premier League rather than just having your normal recruitment team. You can have it's more about data as well. They're having fun, the Brighton fans. Mm. They're having they're having fun. They're enjoying it in the Premier League. Mm. Brentford, I think, enjoying it in the in the Premier League as well. So I think, yeah, it can be done, can it? Aston Villa, they're they're doing all right now. Got a playing good football, good manager. They made some good signings. So you know, when I first started going in the mid nineties, there was we weren't going to win a league title. You know, we'd we'd won the league in nineteen ninety one ninety two, but then that team. Stop playing for Wilco, and you know we we sort of meandered down to fourteen fifteenth, and we got to a Coca Cola Cup final and we lost, you know. But I mean, it, and then we had Graham in, and it, that was not a good watch. But we were sort of, you know, we were mid mid table, and you know we we weren't we you know we might make a cup league cup final, but probably not win it, you know. And and the highlight of the season would have been, you know, beating Scum. Mm. So I think we can get to there realistically next two, three seasons. We can get mid table in the Premier League and we can we can beat we can beat Scum. And I I, I think that, that you know that'd be a fantastic day. And that's that's in my mind, that's a that's a that's a goal for this team. I think, I think if you go up and you invest you know that's fine. If that, if that's the conversation on the table, and in you know Villa, it took Villa a while, didn't it? They nearly went down again. You know be, before they've got to where they've got to now, where they look competent, you know, and, and look like they're going to finish, you know, top top half of the table. I think as long as you know that you, you're going to have to roll, the, you know, roll the dice and spend a lot of money to, um, you know, stay in that division and, and compete well, then I do think that that's fine. But I just I've not I've not missed. The, the Premier League. Oh, and I think it's partly results driven and partly because it was just depressing week in, week out. You know, watching us get beat, watching teams that, you know, sort of on lots of fronts are, shouldn't be a competitor to Leeds, but we'll, we'll just look better organised, better run, better footballers, you know, beating us. It was just depressing. But And I haven't missed Bar, not in the slightest, although we'll get on to referees in a minute because I think they've been fucking rubbish uh, by a rule. And the guy, I mean, the guy on um, Sunday, their striker, that number nine, the big gloy, it was up front for them. It was literally just going round. It left one on uh, strike really early on. Booted uh, Cooper out near the touchline really late. Oh. Kicked him in the face later on. Ran into somebody else. Uh, if that, if that, I mean, the ref, the ref at Hull the week before, during the midweek game, huh. Rodon went for two tackles last night. I hadn't even booked him. It's just a fucking joke. They're so inconsistent. I mean, there's, they, I've got to have a ramble about refs because they're all fucking idiots, aren't they? Just mm. you know, they keep saying, "I oh, respect the ref," and you know, let's. It's a really difficult job, and it's not a difficult job if you just don't, don't have like biases and don't go into games thinking oh, I'm going to not 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 give decisions in front of this crowd. I'm not going to have the crowd make decisions for me. Just go and ref the game and just do it properly with a bit of integrity. They're just awful. They're well, awful if it's man, if it's know. if it's so difficult, help them out a bit. Well, Help them out. By, by doing what? I mean, VAR's not helped anybody in the Premier League. still making decisions, getting them wrong. You know, they're still taking four hours to make an, a, a clear and obvious error decision. It's ridiculous. It's, you just ref the game and do it properly. Well, you, you need people who understand the game. I'd That's say. Well, there you go. Former That's players. It, really, yeah. Yeah. People have played at a decent level and understand. You know, it's like the tackle, the Sheffield United tackle the other day where the kid got a yellow card. Great decision. Should never have been a red. You know, the, the first day, stretching from the first tackle, he, he gets the ball, he doesn't follow through. That's, good, that, that's a great tackle in anybody's book. And they're all, oh, he should have been sent off. That's maybe a red. No chance. You've got to have a few tackles in the game as well. Half of it's the reaction of the players who are getting tackled that, that gets the decision. I mean, you look at uh, when we played Ipswich, Morsey probably should have been sent off for about five yellows. He got one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the game the other day, their striker literally didn't, I don't, didn't see him actually 
try and attempt to play a ball. Once he was just playing men left, right and centre, never got booked. The times that Somerville gets dragged back when he's running through like professional, you know, cynical. Oh my God, it was so, uh, that was really annoying. Nonto at Millwall who got blocked off four or five times because he'd left that right back every time he he went round him. They don't book him and then Rodon makes two tackles, one of which is a perfectly good tackle. And gets booked twice and sent off. It's fucking. It's well, ridiculous. the first yellow card that the the, the uh, he just fell over. That lad. Yeah, it was a foul on Rodon. To be honest, that one I felt he, he held on to him, and that's how Rodon lost his balance and ended up falling into him. But yeah, yeah. just I, I, it's, again the standard of officiating is just abysmal, and it's not whatever technology and whatever systems you, you seem to invent to help them. You can't help people who don't want to be helped. You can't help people who've got no knowledge of how to has, manage has, a football game. Has to be streamlined as well. They have to look mm-hmm. look back at a decision like that and go, no, that sorry, hold your hands up and say, no, I, I rescind that red card. He's not banned and he's available for the next game. Immediately exactly. after, mm-hmm. analyze it. So just a lot of this, a bit, you know, there's no, there's, there's no money in that. They, they they give all the money to the players. So there's, there's no money for, you know, to be filtered through to things like that. And it's, you talk about helping referees, like you said, they need to help themselves. We're not advocating for physical or verbal abuse of referees. You know, that's not what we're saying. We're saying, do your fucking job properly. Mm-hmm. And then you won't get abused. Because well, you might get abused, but... We don't know what goes on behind the scenes. I mean, maybe somebody does pull that ref and say, oh, hang on, if you watch the game against Hull, you know, he's had two bookings and he's been sent off and you, maybe you should... But I don't think that's happening. I think, you know, once they've got away with it, the game's finished, it's like all forgotten about. And like you said, there should be some serious retribution for a ref that lets five or six tactical, cynical fouls go without a guy getting booked once. What's all that about? You know, the, 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 you know, none so particular and Somerville particular players that stand out in that division because they are quite lightweight, but they're also really quick and skillful. They're beating players all ends up and getting, you know, blocked off, held back, obstructed. And that's a, that's, they've been saying that should be a foul. You know, that should be a booking, sorry. And, uh, you know, somebody does it three or four times, gets nothing. It's, it's crazy. I think for me as well is that the level of quality of football is, increase so much over the last few years as well the the refereeing hasn't kept up with the quality of the footballing and obviously they're mm. going by the letter of the law but surely there needs to be a bit of common sense used as well in all this common sense what's that um, I was say. couldn't agree so much with uh with your standard of referees in this league is shocking says liam b and bandy before that as a former as a former referee, I can tell you that the worst thing you can call a ref is a cheat. However, with the advent of VAR, we can see that refs are indeed cheating in that room. And Stunick says, uh, seriously concerned how little protection players like Somerville and Nonto are getting. But it's not just that, is it? Um, it's not just the protection, because I don't think that they're, you know, I've been watching a little bit of the Rugby World Cup. It's amazing what the human body can handle when it wants to. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. it's not just about protecting them. It, it, it's, it's also about protecting the team because our whole heart, most of our ethos is based on sucking the opposition in and hitting them on the break when we, when we win it back, when they can't play through us or break us down. And so we need, we, it's our game plan to use those fast wingers to get mm. in behind. And if they're making tactical fouls every time to stop us doing that, then it's stopping our whole game plan. Mm. Well, it's the spectacle, it, it, isn't it? If, you, if, you're, if you're in it as a referee to promote the spectacle of football, they're not promoting the spectacle because by stopping skillful players playing, by hanging on to the shirt, by Somerville, you know, going away from a player and he gets almost rugby tackled to the floor, that's that spoils the spectacle because most people, all right, you know, the opposition fans wouldn't want to see, you know, Somerville go clean through and nobody put a glare glove on him and score. But virtually everybody else does. You know, the neutrals will want to see good goals scored and skillful football, and certainly we do. And, um, you know, the, the referees need to take some accountability for the fact that they're not allowing the spectacle of, of the football to be the priority. Hmm, definitely. Right here. A um, couple of things from this then. Right. Oh. Why not? Who's that guy? Is that, mm-hmm. is that Jim, Joe Mewis? The Joe Mewis? Yeah, I went to primary school with him. Did you? Really? Yeah. Seven cover pieces. Is, cover is white, by the way. Look yeah. at that. Very Lovely. nice. Uh, so, uh, 
uh, for everyone listening on the pod is there's Leeds United on this day, history of facts and figures from every day of the year by Joe Mewis. Uh, so 26th of September, first appearance for Lucas Radaby in the Leeds shirt. Uh, late substitute, one all draw. Uh, uh, at Sheffield Wednesday at Hillsborough. Now, who who scored a hat trick at Monaco? Can you remember that? Yeboah. Yeboah. Three 0 lead in the UEFA Cup first round, second leg against the uh, French oh, side. That that game at Hillsborough, by the way. Uh, the, the one all draw away at Hillsborough. You'd rather be coming a sub. What year was that? Then it's what year? Nineteen ninety four. Yeah, I think we were sat in their end. <laughs> believe it or not. Yeah, really. <laughs> Nine- did McAllister score our goal? It doesn't say that. No. Joe, oh, you, well. you rubbish come on, book. Joe. Come on, Joe. Joe come on. Provided the facts, Joe, man. You're going to do it. Do it properly, Joe. Christ he, went to bloody, he went to bloody primary school with Barney. I'm surprised he qualified with any writing ability. So, fucking hell. He's a journalist now. <laughs> Is he? Yeah. Good on you, Joe. <laughs> and, uh, and, of course... Uh, 6-0 win in the Champions League group of death. Can you remember over who? Betis Task. I can't pronounce it. That's Betis Task. What? Skull Mastiffs. No, that's them dogs that are getting banned. Betis Task. Besiktas. I was at that game, definitely. That's where you could get three Champions League tickets for 65 quid. For all the group games at home, you could buy three tickets for 65 quid. Them's were the days. Bargain. Bargain there you go, Gary, Gary McAllister. Nice. Half time, Sheffield Wednesday away. McAllister assist Carlton Palmer. Oh God! Yeah, Mark Bright scored for him. Yeah, we were in their end that game. That was quite um, entertaining. I clearly remember that Eirik Backer goal against Besiktas because my my mum absolutely loved Eirik and mm. uh, just turned to her and and she was like, Eirik scored. <laughs> Irik. Great day that. 6 0. Brilliant. Right then. Uh should we wrap this up then, fellas? You got a thing? Hmm? What was that? Sir? Southampton. Oh, Southampton. Do you want to? Yeah. I'd tend not to look ahead because I, you know, it's the championship. You know, I don't care about any of these teams. We're only, we're only gonna see them for a season, so yeah. I, I think um, what the what's his name is, is in trouble there already. He's struggling. Yeah, yeah. Martin. Mm. Russell. Mm. There's a Russell in the bushes. And also, Russell, what Russell, are you doing in the bushes? If you look at his hair, he's trying to copy Fark with his hair. You know, the centre part and then the yeah, yeah. like the hair behind the he- the ear, and it's quite greasy. Because mm. Fark, mm. Fark is quite a shiny man, isn't he? I've noticed. He's very quite shiny. A shiny Center passings are weird. They're 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 a bit odd on a yeah, on a bloke, I reckon. Well, I had a really time really. when it was in fashion during the 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 nineties. You know the yeah. our, um what's his yeah. name from uh, Robbie from Take That. That's that yeah. there was the look on it, like the and then it were quite fucking wedgy in the back. Not where, I, not where I came from, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie from Take That wasn't the fucking look I was going for. Yeah, yeah. We I had, I had the Ian Brown sort of Jesus hair, but I don't think centre parting was the one. But uh, yeah, I remember the curtain head back in the nineties with the centre parting. Yeah, yeah, that was but the one. Like I had, on yeah. an older on an older man, it's definitely a sign of. It's like basically if you had Crocs on on holiday and that haircut, you'd fucking keep your kids well away from him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My dad had the uh, is it J M Williams as uh, the brown boots and the and the blue oh, jeans. Yeah. Oh so yeah, rugby union convention. If you ever use him, yeah, fucking hell. And the centre part in, yeah, not a great yeah. look. I think not. Not. I've not got. I've got look. no. Literally no right to comment on hair as you as you know that. But I can now get away with it because my hair will never be aged and never be <laughs> slagged off other than you bald bastard, which is tired. So. Yeah. Right then, Southampton. Uh, they've oh, sorry, they've won. I, I am a ball bastard. It's fine. Right. Oh, okay. That's what you want to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but just don't, don't touch. Do, do people touch your bald head for good luck or anything uh, like ho- that? Hopefully, yeah, yeah. That's like a mind. Buddha I'm, thing, isn't it? I'm quite happy for people to touch my touch my head. Yeah. Yeah. People, people want to play with which my head, one? I'm fucking, yeah, I'm all up for people playing with my head. It's fine. Yeah. Southampton have won. Well, yeah. Finishes you've meant to start. Southampton have won six of their last nine home league games against Leeds. Drawn one, lost two. With the with the game last season ending two all, 
with the Saints coming from 2 0. That, that was, we should have won that. We were, God, we were flying under Marsh. Oh, I know, what yeah. happened? That was the turning point. I thought we were definitely going in the Champions League when we beat Chelsea 3 0. And anyway, Leeds mm. have lost just one of their last six league games against Southampton 1 3 during two. 1-0 away defeat in October 2021 under Marcelo Bielsa. Southampton could lose five successive league games outside of the top flight for the first time since February 1957 in Division wow. 3 South. Wow. <laughs> That's some style, it. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> They're one goal away from conceding 20 for the season doing so in nine games or fewer to begin a season for the first time since 2012-13. God, have they, con- they conceded 19 goals already? Bloody hell. Uh, mm. Leeds unbeaten in the last six Leeds game, league, league games, 1-3, drawn three, keeping a clean sheet in four. Not since March 2020 have they, have they uh, enjoyed a five-game stretch of uh, clean sheets. And Dan James has more assists in the championship than any other player this season. Four, doing so twice last time out against Watford. He hasn't had more in a single league season since playing for Manchester United in the He's definitely better on the right as well, Dan James, by the way. Well, I don't understand that Dan James. He's miles better on the right. He's naturally putting the ball in with his right foot. I don't know, who fucking idea was it to put him on the left I don't know I mean I know that was early in the season but he's definitely better on the right he's definitely not a striker <laughs> you know score predictions gentlemen I'm going to go 2-3-1 leads Barney I don't think we're going to concede I'm going to go for 2-0 another clean sheet another clean sheet I'm going to go 3-1 one. Oh. I think we might concede I, I was going to nearly went 2-0 I thought I think the, close, the, the clean sheet thing will come to an end um, it'll be somebody that we've been linked with like, or oh, that Arm, Armstrong or uh, Shea Adams will score yeah yeah Shea Adams nailed on nailed on <laughs> uh, a, balls, uh, a few of your uh, uh, predictions then Gail Dale hey, good to see you Gail been a while Saints 2 leads 3 Arthur Bushby, good name, uh, strong, yeah, very strong, str- strong, strong, like English countryside name. Isn't Yorkshire it? name, that yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is out out walking his the fucking walking stick on 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 Arthur Bushby. Let me tell you, two uh, one, uh, do Piro again uh, first goal. Bremner's Gus two nil leads. Uh, Derek Moore says four one leads. Uh, uh, so happy that we got Farker says Gail Dale Foreshore at Foreshores uh, at Norwich says Bushby um, three games until the international bake uh, Piru Hattrick says Gail Dale right that's enough of Southampton hope so what's mm. your thing what's your thing you got a thing what's your thing I really found that I really really enjoy dogging it's fucking brilliant. I'm yeah. No, I'm joking. That's um, great. It's great to great to know. Yeah, imagine if you just came just, on to do you do your thing and it was like, oh, I fucking love wearing suspenders yeah. on a night time in bed and stuff like that. Fucking one one week I'm definitely gonna do that, I reckon. I fucking think I'm gonna hit some sort of midlife crisis and um yeah, I'm gonna fucking end up coming on here. My thing will be something really perverted. But no, my my thing is I'm never going out again, as you know, um from the other week. <laughs> I mean, I've stopped drinking. <laughs> <laughs> on the grounds that I think my liver and my whole body is about to shut down if I don't stop going out and fucking not knowing when to come home. <laughs> I mean, it did surprise me. It surprised the, the timing of your message of when you got home. It, that surprised me. I was like, wow. Well, I mean, I was tempted to game. stay out, but getting home at 10 past four in the morning, I would have I'd probably, my bags would have been packed. Oh really? Right. It, to be honest, what game was it? Was it the, it was oh, it was Millwall. the Millwall game? Millwall. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Millwall. It was an early kickoff, twelve o'clock. My missus said to me, um, "That's how long it seems doing a podcast. We do reviews of going out from fucking two weeks ago and stuff." But yeah, so 
And she said, oh, it was bangers and mash potato. I love bangers and mash with onion gravy as well. And she's like, I said, oh, yeah, I'll be home tea time ish. You know what I mean? It's only a few hours out. And, you know, even if I go like, over the top a bit, I sort of knew it was going wrong when we ended up in Banker's Cat and what was it, that green room place? I thought, oh. I've kind of, I probably should have gone by now if I was going to make it for six o'clock. And, um, yeah, fibre till half past three in the morning. Brilliant. Good going, yeah. So I texted you at seven minutes past four or whatever it was saying, yeah. just got in. Just to let you know, you know, give me three rings and all that. But <laughs> fucking, I was in the right tangle. I couldn't believe I right woke, woke up to that message. God. Hey, 4 a.m. Fucking Sunday night. Well, you know that song by Cherry, Cherry Ghost I was playing to as well that week. Cherry Ghost song, 4 a.m. I just wanted to be out at that time. But, yeah, just <sighs> stupid, man. I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. I'm just an idiot. But uh, I did. Like, we had a good time, didn't we? It was a good day. We had a lovely few beers. And, yeah. yeah, it was really good. I mean, you, 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 we were already too um, tippled. And we were already enjoying ourselves too much to do a to do a pod, really. And and, yeah, and it was a lunchtime it, kickoff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, so you can imagine. Uh, Arthur Bushby, need, another. Need us, to, need us to say my bangers and mash was under some tin foil on this fucking centre aisle of the kitchen <laughs> when I got home. Hey, that's not bad though. That's. <coughs> Luke you know, warm, did, you, know, did, warm. Dis, you know what I did disgustingly though, because I couldn't eat it then obviously, and the next day yeah. I was in a fucking tangle. So I literally just got the sausages and, and some mash and the um cauliflower cheese out of the dish with a bit of onion gravy and put it in a bread bun and ate it cold. <laughs> fucking... I, bet, I bet that tastes quite nice actually. Ah, it was like it was the gravy was running down my fingers. I was like, <laughs> blah, 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 like making involuntary noises and stuff. And, <laughs> Fucking, my eyes were shutting. The oh, eyes I was eating because I fucking had about three hours kick. Um, well, I had meetings at work on the Monday as well. I don't know how I did it. I went to work. Oh. And did, I, yeah, I know. Yeah, about eleven o'clock. Luckily, I didn't have any really early ones. But yeah, when I got in from those meetings, that's what I did. I, I put the cold sausage, onion gravy, and a bit of mashed potato spread on the bread bun, and then the the um, cauliflower cheese on top, and just ate it with, like I said, just gravy running down to me watch, and fucking loved it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a fucking animal. I need help. I'm nearly 52 years old this year. Fucking never, never changed. It's I, need, I need fucking help. It's like that. Um, the the Three Lions music video where he he put he dunks his dunks his hand in the custard and it to make the just the imagine all the gravy <laughs> dripping down you. Just like you the animal, it. the animal noise is just the the raw vitriol just. So anyway, I've been off it since. I'll probably, uh, I, probably get back on the wagon this week. I, I should think so. Bloody hell. You've got... You're like a machine. Are you sure you're not in it's some not sort good. of like government... No, no, good. Secret government programme that's keeping you at, in your 20s, like, like, like physically 25-year-old? I hope so. Jesus Christ. It's only thing, I think there must be something special that's keeping me going. A will to, will to keep going, I think. But yeah, fucking brilliant. I do like a good blowout, to be fair, but that was... Yeah. Uh, I, the, my mate who came to meet us, Brendan, um, I texted him that Roy Keane meme the next day, which was... Uh, I don't think that's a very good idea, or whatever it is, you know, that one. <laughs> um, I don't think it was a clever, very clever idea. And uh, <laughs> he just sent me a text back saying... Uh, I met a WhatsApp back saying, um, a night of regret and injury. <laughs> I don't even know what that meant. I think it was more pride than, than anything else. But he said he couldn't lift his arms up above his shoulders. So, <laughs> hmm, that sounds fucking <laughs> get to go to hospital. <laughs> <laughs> he only joined us at about eight o'clock as well. I think, you know, dear me. I mean, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Good God. Fucking hell. Yeah, your liver must be like Arnold Schwarzenegger or something. It's just, give me more. I, I can handle that. more. <laughs> Just don't want to think about it. God knows what I was doing. I can't remember. I had to, I had to when I woke up next day, I had to look at my bank to see where I'd been. I was like, oh yeah, I sort of vaguely remember going there. I don't remember going there or there or there. All oh, right, cool. Yeah, great. When I and left I'd... you, you were telling me the same story for the third time. I was that? In, in was two it? hours. That's that's when people who are not drunk go home, innit? I can't do with this repetition. It's fucking embarrassing. I'll just go. Which story was it? Was it a good one? Oh, you're not allowed to repeat it. I can't remember now. Guy, fucking, I told you three times and you can't remember it. <laughs> shit. A lot's happened. 
Well, yeah, I also time. I also had thirty pounds worth of Uber charges, and I never got an Uber. So fuck knows what I was doing. I must have been ringing them to come and get me, and then moving, or just not turning up, and then getting the cancellation charges. Yeah, fucking hell. Just paying for all these oh. random strangers' Ubers back home. I love a Sunday. I love a Sunday sesh. <laughs> Trash bag Sunday, we used to call it. Mm. And my uh, my Italian friend, um, when I lived in a. I lived in a house share in Tasmania. Uh, he used to call it pros- Sunday prostitute. Because if you <laughs> if you if you hadn't pulled by Sunday, that's what that's what you'd be doing. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Italians for you. Italians, yeah, he's a larger than life character. Barney, you got a thing? No. <laughs> no, that's no. A bit, bit boring, really. No, nothing, nothing for me. You got the story of your, uh, what were you called? What were you called on Twitter the other day? <clears throat> weak son. Oh, Why weak was son. that? Weak son, yeah. So I posted a picture on my mum and then another this person set up, I think it's their 12th account now to oh, troll, yeah. troll me. So, yeah. Persistence. It's, I've got to hand it to him. <laughs> I, I buy him a pint just to say, well done, have you? Great effort. Dedication. Yeah. It's dedication yeah. for you, isn't it? it? Is. Yeah, dedication, that. Uh, you must be exhausted, pal. You must be <laughs> thirsty, too. <laughs> what are you having? Your mum looks like a diamond anyway, Barney, so I go hate us. It's like a proper solid, good North Yorkshire woman. Well, she's not. She's, well, she's, from, not. she's from Darlow. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some good people come from up that part of the world, don't they? My... And she's made it out. And she's made it out of Darlow, which is even better for her. Well, she <laughs> she lived in Darlow, then she lived in Northern Ireland for a bit as well. Oh, the hell! She's oh, the be like my yeah. liver. Yeah. My uh, my granddad used to work for ICI. Mm. He was one of the people that brought nylon into this country. Is that a fact? Like, that's a fact. Yeah. This is the see. This is the kind of riveting shit that you've everyone. been missing. Yeah. I know. I haven't got anything for you. Then he comes out with that shit. What you like? Yeah. Fucking <laughs> little devil, you. He was the one who uh, found out how to manufacture it over in this country. So yeah, there you go. So responsible for countless ripped tights over um, the years. Probably static electricity fires. That too. You ever take? Yeah. You ever take your shirt off and just little lightning oh, yeah. bolts everywhere? Yeah. Mm. It's like Not when you got good. your shell suit and then when you went to Cubs, don't come near the fire, mate. Don't come near the fire. <laughs> That's why everyone had perms in the 80s, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Too much nylon. Uh, what's my thing? Um, see, I've, I've asked you both. I've delayed as much as I can. And uh, no, no still nothing. I tell you what, I I watched uh, Winning Time, the Rise of the Lakers dynasty recently. That was good. That was really good. I'm just trying to think about um, Jesus. It's been my phone's been on loud. See how popular I am. Don't even have to uh, turn it off loud. Uh, I, I'm actually listening to a, a quite a good audio book about Hitler uh, by Ian Kershaw. There you go. Hitler. Hitler yeah. by Ian Kershaw. Sounds and quite it's deep. Uh, yeah, condensed uh it was a, a two uh two book uh two books that he and he, he had all of the notes and, and he's cut three hundred thousand words down to condense condense both into into one book on, on his life and it was quite interesting. I didn't realise, but he lived just round the corner from where I live in Vienna. So Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler did. <laughs> Not Ian Curtis, whatever he's called. Oh. Yeah. Ian Curtis, no. No. Whatever he's called. Ian Kershaw. Kershaw. Yeah. Kershaw. Kershaw. Yeah, Hitler that was the Stones Ro- well, Stone Roses guy, wasn't it? Ian Curtis. No, yeah, he was, didn't uh, write a book about Hitler. Joy Division. Yeah, the guy from Joy yeah. Division who died, died yeah. years ago. He yeah. wrote a book about Hitler. Little known. Lived- I'd lived in Austria and ate Donny. Yeah. Like, you know, Little just no. Love, love, this will like tell, love, will, like love will tear you apart. sounds like a lie, Donny. Love will tear you apart is actually all about Hitler. <laughs> Hitler and Eva Braun. Yeah. yeah, and how his terrible relationship with the Jewish girl. Yeah. 
Michelle's clouded his lie. clouded his judgment quite dramatically. Well, maybe that's why they came up with the name New Order, like New World Order. You know, it's yeah, mate, fucking hell, we're onto something. Yeah, you might be right. He, so Ian Curtis lived near you in Austria and wrote a book about Hitler. <laughs> then they changed the name of the band after he died to New got Order. Lock, got locked in a cell for years. <laughs> that's why we wrote all the songs. Have you seen the cover to Warsaw, the album that's got like the little drummer boy that looks a bit like a brown Hitler's youth brown shirt? Fucking hell, we've hit, we've hit some history gold here. Let's, let's start like a history a conspiracy channel. sort of podcast. Like this, this is definitely conspir- conspiratorial, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely yeah. conspiratorial. Be careful because some of the fucking weirdos on X and Twitter will be fucking literally taking this seriously thing, spreading it out, and have Lawrence Fox commenting on it soon, or fucking Tommy Robinson or something. It is the kind of weird thing that that would get some sort of yeah, would. strange cult following. Yeah. yeah, makes yeah. you think. It does make you think. Yeah, yeah, because there there are a few like Morrissey. Like Morrissey went down a sort of weird dark path, didn't he? So I mean, it, they've got form these eighties musicians. I don't have a bad word said about Morrissey. I think he's been badly uh, treating the press since forever, and just people keep falling for it. Did he not, not say something? Did he not say something about immigrants are bad? Or I, 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 it depends who you listen to, but yeah, I think. <laughs> No, I don't think he did. He sung a song called Bengali in Platforms and everybody said that was racist. And he was on, was it um, Finsbury Park or one of the things in London where he had a Union Jack and he was racist. And then I think somebody said he had a Britain's first bad job, which is obviously shit. And I think he did genuinely have that on. But whether it was intended to be ironic, I just don't know. You don't know him, Morrissey D. He's fucking mad and he's weirder. Yeah, Joy, yeah, exactly. Stu Nick's coming out with the facts. Now, we're on to something here, boys, I'm telling you. Joy Division was a terrible thing from the concentration camps. It was, yeah. Was it? Yeah. The Joy yeah. Division. Yeah, it was some yeah, brutal group who were involved. In, yeah, anyway. Probably need to stop talking about that. Have What's you, have going on here? <laughs> have you murdered a prostitute recently? What? You? <laughs> what? <laughs> Where did you get that from? <laughs> some of you are reading. And some of you are Where's reading. that come from? <laughs> What the fuck? Just that around. took a fucking turn, that sentence. Just like, so we are reading and fucking watching material. It's like, I watched this program about Hitler. <laughs> Did you? I don't think I've ever watched a program about Hitler. I just don't really, really? live the twat. I just, I, just find, I, just, I just find it all really, I just find it fascinating, absolutely fascinating. I just, like, I just find yeah. it like, so fascinating how, how somebody got from that and just like different period of time. And I always, you know, ever since like just learning about <clears throat> Nazis and World War Two in primary school, I think it was just, yeah, just modern history. I don't know. It's just absolutely fascinating to me. Like how how did that even come about? You know, how did ordinary well, people get convinced to do that crazy? Well, the way the world's going at the minute, we might fucking find out in real time soon. Do you know what I mean? Well, that's the other thing as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like how, how does could it we possibly a... repeat it? <laughs> yeah. How does it have a hold over people? Here we go. Yeah, fuck me. Uh, bonkers. So even some of the... Uh, so Dav said, even some of our fans are saying, it's time to go, boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, try. I, try. I, I, think, I think we should do these more regularly and for less time. We'd probably be the secret yeah. to this fucking uh, podcast game. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good work. Good evening, fellas. And Barney Silhouette. Yeah, I need a <laughs> light. So, uh, yeah. yeah, Barney is very sort of... Um, Informant on a anonymous informant on a documentary, isn't he? At the moment, it is that, it is that voice putting on now. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I was there on the night, and he, uh, he definitely hit him over the head with a ashtray. I saw it. Uh... <laughs> I was on a podcast, and they started talking about Hitler. <laughs> I knew I said something about being prostitutes, and I knew I knew it was time to get out of there. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, right. Stop. Fucking stop. So I start blinking now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. <laughs> so People voted for Johnson. Says Gordon White. Mm. That's that's true. That's true. Um, yeah, it's one of them sat silhouette in your top right hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that bombshell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, Mac hasn't even got a dog, says Junik. Well, so there mean? we go. 
Oh, but you just say four nil leads. Oh, there were some yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. There were some yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think we need to keep it tight. Says Nick G. Uh, don't concede. Simple as one nil to Leeds. There we go. So come on, Leeds. Come on, Leeds. And um, we'll see you when we see you for the next. Yeah, whenever. I know. Yeah. In League One. <laughs> <laughs>